everybody, I'm Taylor Hull. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see behind me, we've got the Corvette. We just came back from Lanier from testing. Everything, well, it's probably gonna sound like it didn't go well, but it actually did go well. We had power steering fail. That's what ended up putting us out and kind of killing us for the day because one of the hard lines broke and I didn't bring all my spare parts with me, so shame on me. But uh, power steering failed. We had an injector, I think, gum up and fail, which is a byproduct, I believe, from the car sitting over the winter and it had a little bit of fuel in the bottom. And uh, I think it probably just got gummed up and failed. So we got to get a new set of injectors. We're going to replace those. And uh, other than that, the car went really well. We fixed our belt issue, and now the car starts and runs and does everything really well. We got supercharger all sorted out, and I'm very, very happy with how we left testing. We're gonna have our new Kenda tires showing up here very shortly, and we're gonna get this Comp Cams Corvette back out on the track probably next weekend. So we've spent a lot of time, Mike and I, trying to get the body sorted out, really more Mike than me. Um, I've done a lot of the mechanical stuff, Mike's done the body stuff, and we've been spending a lot of time on that, so that's why I haven't been making a YouTube video here recently. I should have been documenting that, so sorry. Um, but I've also honestly been spending a lot of time on what we're gonna talk about today, which is researching stuff about oval track racing. So I'm gonna go through a little bit of kind of the options we've been looking at. First option is what we call an outlaw late model. So a lot of the time what these are, well, all the time they're straight rail late models, which when we talk about a straight rail late model, it means the left side, excuse me, the right side frame rail is actually straight. Um, pretty interesting car. And these cars are usually old pro or super late models that have been re-outfitted with a with like flat sheet metal body panels and they've got like that wedge dirt car look so body panels are a little bit cheaper for them uh the engine package is somewhat similar to what it is in a pro late model which is a crate engine usually a 604 crate motor and when i say a 604 that's not the cubic inch it's the gm part number um that's a mistake i made when i was first looking at oval track stuff but i'll put a picture of one of these up on the screen now They're pretty interesting cars. They run at Five Flags down in Pensacola, Montgomery, once or twice in Nashville, and down in Cordial. So pretty regionally to where I'm at in Atlanta, which is nice that it's close to home. So that's definitely an option that we're gonna look at. They're typically two or three speed transmissions, and they're on an eight inch tire, so they're a little bit more out of control. So a lot of fun car there. Um, second option is a Pro Late model, which was what those are typically built from. This is what you think of on like the, the really fast looking, low to the ground, fastest type late model that there is other than a super late model, which is the same car just with a bigger engine. Um, not gonna be doing one of those because that's basically like the same level of build as like a pro Formula D car. They're that same level of expense and very high to operate and all that. So I'm trying to do something on the side of Formula Drift, um, not like equal to. So. Pro late model is that just with a crate engine. Again, usually like a GM 604 crate motor. It's got a couple updates from comp cams, um, rocker arms and things like that. So that's what we're looking at for that. That's also like a two or three speed transmission, um, sometimes a four depending on where you go. It's on a bigger 10 inch tire. You can do, so one thing I didn't mention about the Outlaw Late models, you can, they have a minimum spring rate, so you can't do what they call bump stops, which does complicate the suspension a little bit on these cars. But the Pro Late models, you can do bump stops. There's, you can pretty much put whatever kind of shocks on them you want, whereas the Outlaws, they have like a claim rule on the shocks, so they keep it a little bit more budget friendly. Pros, you can put some expensive shocks on there. You know, you, you see some crazy stuff going on with shocks. So. That's a little bit more money, initial upfront investment and to, uh, to operate than what the Outlaw is, but you can run them everywhere. So you can run this car at Montgomery, Nashville, um, Pensacola. They run all up in the Carolinas with the Carolina Pro Series. Um, down in Florida, Orlando, 
New Smyrna, um, Citrus County, Auburndale, the, the list goes on. You can run these cars damn near anywhere. And then the third and final option is a late model stock car. So this is like, you know, if you follow along uh, late model based YouTube channels, uh, channels like Landon Huffman's and Doug Barnes, they both run um, late model stock cars up in the Carolinas. So if you don't know, I went to school up in the Charlotte area. So that's something that I've been around, I've spent some time with. I love the NASCAR scene, obviously, you know, with my tributes to Dale on the, the Corvette and things like that. Circle track racing is a very big part of my background and it's something that I'm really missing. I just really need to scratch that itch. So late model stock cars is a full body stock car, full chassis, more like what you see in a traditional NASCAR cup car or Xfinity car. Not so much the new ones, but up until the, the new Gen 7 cars, you know, all the old NASCAR cup cars. They're door bars on both sides, big heavy cars in comparison to the pro late models, the asphalt late models or the super late models. Bigger car. Still on a big tire, um, still a spec crate type engine. You can run a 604, but it's not gonna be as competitive in a, in a late model stock car. Um, again, a little bit more upfront investment. So the cars are a little bit cheaper. The cars themselves are a little bit cheaper than like the pro or the super late model, but the engine's a little bit more expensive. So you're gonna end up spending, you know, net about the same. The Outlaw's the cheapest. The pro and the late model stock cars are about the same. These cars you can run up at Anderson Motor Speedway in South Carolina. You can run at Kingsport, Tennessee, Hickory Motor Speedway, Florence, South Carolina, as far as places close to me. Um, and there's a bunch of other places in the Carolinas and Virginia, like Tri-County, Caraway, um, Motor Mile, South Boston, Langley, all up in there. And, you know, you, you've seen watching our channel that we drive to Seattle. So going up to Virginia and North Carolina is not a big deal to me. But... That's kind of what we're looking at is, you know, what do you think we need to get involved in? What kind of races are close to you that you'd like to come watch us and, and see kind of how we progress? I want to do a deep dive into these kind of cars whenever we do finally hone in on what we want and take you along for the ride for the prep of these cars and going to the races and what it takes to be successful. Hopefully we, hopefully we end up being successful in this type of series and maybe we'll drag a few of our buddies along the way and uh, introduce them to some circle track racing where they might not have been before. So let us know in the comments what you'd like to see us get and if you'd like to come hang out and watch some racing. Thanks so much. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you on the next video, which will probably be this testing the Kenda tires. Thank you.